Good morning, my lovely viewers, and welcome to Real Talk. I am your host, Eve Nyaga. So gender-based violence is an ongoing conversation, but today we will be looking at it from a different light. So a couple of years back, a woman was stripped naked in the streets of Nairobi for being indecently dressed. And on that light, today we are going to be talking about measures that we can take to curb gender-based violence in the transport sector. You can be part of this conversation by sending in your comments, questions, or telling us where you're watching us from on East Circuit across all our social media platforms. You can also talk to me directly on my social media platforms at Eve underscore Nyaga one on Instagram and Facebook. Twitter and Eve, Evelyn Nyaga on Facebook, sorry for that. So my guest today is, goes by the name Naomi Moora. She is the founder of Flown Initiative that champions for rights of, for women who work in the transport sector. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling today? Oh, good. Mm -hmm. um, a bit early for me on a Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but so glad to be here. Yeah, we are lucky to have you too. Thank you. Yes. So um, kindly tell us what you do. Um, so I run a non-profit mm -hmm. uh, for the past six years. Mm -hmm. We work in the matatu mm -hmm. industry, mm -hmm. working with uh, matatu circles. Mm -hmm. And we train them on customer service. Mm -hmm. And we sensitize them on sexual harassment yeah. and help them develop a sexual harassment policy. Mm -hmm. And we also look at their internal structures, inter internal HR structures, looking at their recruitment, their promotion policies, in order to get more women into the workplace. Yeah. And we also have our Women in Transport program, mm -hmm. which Saito uh, Naitam Super Anganya, where we work with women in the matatu industry mm -hmm. to help uh, attract more women into the industry, retain the ones that are existing, mm -hmm. and help them move up the career ladder. Mm -hmm. Yes. I believe that any initiative that someone mm -hmm. starts, all mm -hmm. the people, if you look at the history of most initiatives, yes. most um, works, um, people who have founded so many things, mm -hmm. they have a backstory. Mm -hmm. There's something that pushed them to that direction. Yeah. So what pushed you to that direction? Um, so I grew up in a family that ran matatus. Mm -hmm. And so I think unconsciously I didn't realize that I was actually very fascinated by matatus. Really? Um, yes, and mm -hmm. so it was run by my uncles, mm -hmm. right? And um, for me, it was just like any other job, yeah. right? Uh, my uncles are like my fathers to me. Actually, they are my mm -hmm. fathers. And it was only later when, when I started going to university that I realized there's a perception people have about Matatu yeah. people yeah. that is not what I grew up with. Mm -hmm. Right, just like any other daughter that sees their father as their heroes, mm -hmm. that's what I saw. People who are turned out to be matatu drivers and conductors, yeah. they were my heroes, they were the people who paid my school fees, they were mm -hmm. the people who took me to hospital. And so I realized there's a problem in the industry mm -hmm. that people see the matatu industry as chaotic, yeah, as yeah. something that, like a necessary evil, and mm -hmm. if we could get rid of it all at once, we would. But my perception is that it's a misunderstood and neglected uh, industry, right? Okay. So for example, if um, somebody has never gone to computer class, mm -hmm. right? And you give them a laptop mm -hmm. and you tell them, type this handwritten note, right? What will happen? They won't, they yeah, won't they be won't able to type the note, yes. Yeah. They'll either, you know, mess up the keys of mm -hmm. your laptop, maybe um, they'll open the laptop and open like a million and one tabs. Yeah. Right? Or they'll go to a cyber cafe and say, hey, can you type this out for me? Mm -hmm. 500 bob, mm -hmm. 200 bob. Right? Yeah. And then so you come back and you tell, and you ask the person, so where is my typed work? Mm -hmm. Right? And you realize they've not done a good job. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and you get mad at them. Right? And that's what we do with Matatu people. Yeah, we don't yeah. offer them any training on this work. Mm -hmm. Right? On average, just talking about a small matter to the 14-seater one, mm -hmm. right? So it will carry about, let's say, 14 people, mm -hmm. right? Make about five round trips. Yes. So in other words, a matatu crew is serving about 120 people. In a day. In a day. Yeah. With no customer service training. Mm -hmm. True. Right? Yeah. When you're talking about one, the owner is, mm -hmm. you let her 5K mm -hmm. at the end of the day. How yeah. you do it? I don't care. 
that's up to you. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then we get very shocked mm -hmm. when when you know th they don't have customer service skills. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, they are driving recklessly. Mm -hmm. They were just given a vehicle that was yeah, they are talking rudely to yeah, the five, passengers. Yeah, five thousand baht per day. Yeah, woke she kwa jipange. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so that's our work to just professionalize the industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So talking about um, women in the industry yes. and gender-based violence, what have you experienced that personally? Um, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. um, so there was. Again, I was in university, I was going home, and I was at my hometown, mm -hmm. and I'd, I wanted to go see my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And I, I just alighted the matatu, and I had my earphones on, and somebody How just grabbed me. I think I was about, I would say I was about 22. Yeah, okay. And somebody grabbed me, mm -hmm. and I turned back, and there's this angry man, right? I did psychology, so I'm very mm -hmm. into non-verbal <laughs> communication. <laughs> yeah. So I could tell, like, the clenched fist, the, the face, I was like, oh, Lord, I'm in trouble. Yeah. I don't know what I did, but mm -hmm. I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. And so being in my hometown, mm -hmm. the first thing I did was like, okay, I think I'm about to get beaten up. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I called out to one of my uncles. I was like, yeah. Uncle Mora, you know. <laughs> and I think he realized, oh, I think this chick knows somebody at this bus stop. Mm -hmm. And so he ran away. Mm -hmm. Why was he angry? So, so there was a lady behind me, and she caught up with me because mm -hmm. uh, I started now looking for my uncles. Mm -hmm. And she's like, he was trying to say hi to you, and I was like, I didn't hear. Mm -hmm. And if I did, and I didn't respond, mm -hmm. that that should not be him, yeah. um, the reaction, mm -hmm. right? So I found my uncle, and Uncle Mora, and I asked him. I, there's this guy and he asked me, okay, describe the guy and he said, oh, okay, he's one of the street uh, boys mm -hmm. that hangs around the bus stop. And and I was a bit shook and then I got to my grandmother's place and asked Shosho, I'm like, Shosho, what do you think of my dressing? And she was like, no, you're fine. And my Shosho had radars, <laughs> like she could sense a small skirt from like yeah. a mile away. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I... And I think after that, I didn't remember about the incident mm -hmm. until I saw a video clip of a lady being mm -hmm. stripped. Mm -hmm. So was the clip before <coughs> your incident happened or after? It was after. Okay. It was after. It was about two years later. Mm -hmm. So two years later, I see this clip of a lady being stripped in Yeri. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember, it was in May 2013. Mm -hmm. and, and it was in that like watching that video clip, I had imagined what would have happened to me on that yeah, bus stop. Yeah. But it was nothing compared to what I had imagined, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. At no point in my mind did I think like somebody would do that to yeah. strip me if I hadn't called out uncle's name. Mm -hmm. And so we had conversation with my girlfriends mm -hmm. at that time. And one thing that we all agreed on is that there's an issue in public transport yeah, in terms of yeah. harassment and, and violence. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have data to back it up. Mm -hmm. No research was being done on the issue. Mm -hmm. And after like months of talking, we're like, we'd meet and be like, yeah. I'm like, no, there's something in me that's yeah, just like, else, yeah. we need to do something about it. And that's how we started the, the initiative. Mm -hmm. So when you saw that um, clip in Yeri, mm. had you seen the other one that happened in Nairobi? Um, so the one in Nairobi hadn't happened yet, because mm -hmm. that happened... Uh, I think 2014? Yes, 2014. Yeah. Um, yes, so it was actually what happened is we started our initiative, formally registered it in 2013 mm -hmm. after that incident. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, we were really struggling to to tell people what's the issue. They're like, ah, we don't think it's that bad. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it was only after the three video clips in Nairobi mm -hmm. and my dress, my choice, mm -hmm. that people were like, okay, now we, yeah. we see what you've been talking yes. about. Is this what you've been talking about? And mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, it's yeah. been going on for years. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate that three women had to go through it had the incident. Um, and those are the only ones that... That we know. Yeah, of. that we know. Yeah. Right? I think every woman from day to day goes through that. Yes. Someone says hi to you, then you don't say hi back, and then they're angry, they start mm -hmm. insulting you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think those 
three incidences in Nairobi and my dress, my choice were a real tipping point for our work. Mm -hmm. Right? People started saying, okay, we see what you're doing. What do you want to do to solve this issue? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So having um, grown up in a, in a family that works in the Matatu yes. transport sector, what are some of the myths that people have when it comes to the transport sector? What, what are some of them? Some of the myths. Oh, myths. Yes. Oh, oh, my good Lord. Um, they are uncouth. Mm -hmm. uh, they are perpetrators of violence. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want a life. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I, I was. It's not a way to make <laughs> a living. <laughs> yes, that it's not a job. Mm -hmm. Right, that they don't have families. Yeah, that they're in poverty. Mm -hmm. Right, and being at the end of that, mm -hmm. where like, the, like um, they had really long working hours. Yeah, right? yeah. So they would leave home at around five. They'll mm -hmm. be c coming in at around um, eleven p.m. Yeah. Every day is a working day. Is it a holiday? Is it Sunday? Mm -hmm. So seeing them struggle through that on the other side, I really appreciated the sacrifices they took mm -hmm. to feed the family. Mm -hmm. Right? I do not take it for granted that I went to university off Matatu yeah. money. Right? Yeah. And I remember like they used to come for visiting with the Matatu. Right? <laughs> Matatu. You are in a matatu. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I think growing up with them, for me, it's just any other job. Yes. And I did see it provide. Mm -hmm. And I really do understand the struggle mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and for me, it's to say that I am a product of matatu. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like. Proudly. Oh, 110%. <laughs> 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 okay. There's nothing else I'd rather do mm -hmm. with my life. Mm -hmm. um, and to, to create another different perception about Matatu people. Mm -hmm. There are people just like you who show up to the studio. There are people just like me who show up in an office and work in a non-profit. Yeah. Right? There are people who are just trying to feed their family. Mm -hmm. and, there are peop and there are families out there who are praying mm -hmm. for their family members to come back home. Because yes, yeah. I remember Safe one incident, mm -hmm. my uncle was uh, carjacked. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> the police were informed about it. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, they didn't know that the uh, Matatu carjackers had put him in the boot. Okay. And so the police started shooting at the carjackers. Mm -hmm. wow. And unfortunately, he got shot. Mm -hmm. right? So you can imagine we're at home. We've had the, our Matatu has been carjacked. Yeah. We start praying. Mm -hmm. We don't know where they are. We have no information. So it took like the whole day. Nobody is sleeping at home. Mm -hmm. Right? And finally getting news like, okay, um, he's fine, but mm -hmm. he's been shot. Yes. And I remember going to the hospital with my grandmother, and my grandmother had forgotten to wear her shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we were in the hospital, and we were like, okay, it's too late to go to bed and get sandals. Yes. So somebody had to go home and get her shoes, mm -hmm. and finding out that he'd been shot, he had to go for surgery. Mm -hmm. And we are outside, and we are just praying that yeah, he makes it out. That, yeah. We don't know if the matatu will be ever be back on the road. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so it's just like any other job, and there are families out there that are depending on. Yeah, them. that's their livelihood. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe your uncle is well now. Yes, he was just mm -hmm. shot in the leg, okay. um, and it's very interesting because he decided to save. Uh, the matatu was shot at the back, so mm -hmm. he decided to save um, that. So it, it's still. In the Matatu back in those days, mm -hmm. it was still there, and he kind of had a graffiti artwork on it, okay. like I survived. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it's fine. Yeah. yeah. So, um, other than championing for comfortable working spaces for women in transport, yes. yeah, what other objective did you have in mind when you started Flown Initiative? Um, again, even going back to my personal experience that the matatu industry was something the men in the family did. Mm -hmm. um, and so we realized there were very few women in the industry. Mm -hmm. And that's how we decided to start the um, Super Anganya program. Yeah. Um, and so just bringing the women together, because what would happen is that there's maybe one circle with two women, mm -hmm. there's another circle with two other women. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so your circle is just working as drivers, the women working as drivers, touts. Um, so we did a research on mm -hmm. that just to inform our programming and to create awareness on the status of women in matatu industry. Yeah, ninety-five percent of them mm -hmm. are conductors. Really? Yes. Which is one of the lowest paying jobs in yeah. the industry, mm -hmm. right? And it's also very um, determined by the driver. Mm -hmm. The driver at a peak conductor. Yeah. Right? Mm. So sometimes you'll find that the women, <coughs> as we say in the industry, umeka kwa mawe, waiting for a driver to pick you up to be his conductor. Okay. Right? And that's why we work with circles to formalize that process of recruitment. Because mm -hmm. sometimes driver at a hey, by the way, uh, you need to give me a bit of. Hmm? something yes there's, yeah so that you can a bit become of like, my conductor um, a job um, where you how do I say this in a nice way uh, well there's no way of saying this in a nice way uh -huh. is that um, they want sexual favor mm -hmm. in return for a job yeah right and so if you don't if you don't agree mm -hmm. right but there are good drivers who are like, okay, I see you. Mm -hmm. I see you're just like us trying to make a living. Mm -hmm. Come and be my conductor. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice. That's interesting. <coughs> so um, what are maybe the measures that you take to make sure mm -hmm. that women are comfortable in that environment? Not only the women who are working in that industry, mm -hmm. commuters as well. Ah, okay. So we've done uh, a couple of advocacy campaigns. Mm -hmm. Um, so we worked with various uh, artists. Mm -hmm. So we've worked with an illustrator to have posters <coughs> in Matatus. Mm -hmm. You'll see, I think somebody even sent me one from uh, Matatu in um, Kitengela. Mm -hmm. There are posters just creating awareness about, for example, how to sit in a Matatu. Right? Yeah. You'll find like sometimes um, men will just be sitting and they're just taking I the know, whole it's so seat. annoying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or they wait until there's a bump and then they use the bump to like, you know, touch yeah. you inappropriately. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have uh, advocacy tools uh, in terms of posters that mm -hmm. talk about those issues. Yeah. Right. Um, talking about how, for example, <coughs> women are afraid to travel at night. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. Yeah. Uh, or, tr or get into a matatu, especially after dark, mm -hmm. that has only male commuters, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So these are, when we do our customer service training mm -hmm. to the circles and um, matatu workers, mm -hmm. these are things we sensitize them on. Mm -hmm. What are women's safety concerns mm -hmm. when it comes to matatu? Yeah. And how can you handle that? Mm -hmm. What are women's travel needs? Because mm -hmm. you'll find a woman, who can a handbag, mm -hmm. who can a shopping. Mm, maybe if even a kid. Yes. Yeah. And maybe it's even one kid, two kids, yeah. right? And you're trying to get into a matatu that's moving. So we say, okay, so here's the lady. How do you help her? You need to take her luggage, mm -hmm. put it in. Mm -hmm. Take the kids, make sure they are seated, mm -hmm. and then now the lady gets in. Yes. Right? See, at the end of the mat, even before we came to the mat, we had a Right? Mm -hmm. And she's wondering, should I hold on to the shopping? Should I hold on to, to the first child? one, to the second uh -huh. one? Do I hold on to myself? Yeah. You know? Um, and so we have uh, those trainings with the uh, circles, as mm -hmm. I mentioned, customer service mm -hmm. and the adoption of sexual harassment policies, mm -hmm. both in the workplace mm -hmm. and also to handle commuters' grievances on mm -hmm. harassment. Yes. Right? For example, you've been harassed in Amatatu. Mm -hmm. Where do you report? Yeah, where do you report? The circle? Yes, yeah, so you're supposed to report to the circle. Mm -hmm. right? What is the circle? does nothing about it so that's that's what we work on like we have um <coughs> we work on them to have a pipeline on how to report yeah right for example we advocate for fair chats mm -hmm. so when you get into a matatu you know if unatoka tao unenda githurai this is the amount of mm -hmm. money you and pay and it's written down yes it's written yeah. down. it's written down mm -hmm. if it's um it's peak hours, you know how much you're supposed to pay. Mm -hmm. And in that sticker, mm -hmm. there should be a place where you report. Yeah. Right? And there should be someone dedicated mm -hmm. to that but phone line. Yeah. And there should be a book you have with grievances, like saying, on this day we received this complaint. Mm -hmm. This is the person who complained. Mm -hmm. This is the person assigned mm -hmm. to that complaint. Okay. And deadlines for that. Mm -hmm. For example, let's say, Something in Megwapenia stage, yeah, mm -hmm. Gedorai. Yeah. 
the person who would be assigned to that is mm -hmm. a stage manager. Right? Because anajua exactly who it is. Nim Kamagera Alikuharas, mm -hmm. who is on his stage, mm -hmm. or is it the conductor, or is it the driver, was it inside, was it a fellow commuter? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so we work with them, like with these uh, books, mm -hmm. to now follow up with them, like what did you do about these kids? Mm -hmm. Who was assigned? What did mm -hmm. they do? Did you follow up with the commuter? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Could so you kindly um, share your social media pages before we go on? Oh, yes. So on Twitter, mm -hmm. we are at, at Flown Initiative, F L O N E mm -hmm. Initiative. Uh, on Facebook, same thing, Flown Initiative, F L O N E Initiative. And on Instagram, same, same thing. Yes. Okay. And um, you've talked about some of the programs that you have and yes. you've been talking about Msupawanganya. Yes. I didn't know it was a program. I actually just saw the short film trailer. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Talk about that in the programs, other programs and projects that you have. Um, so we've been doing the Msupawanganya program for about two years now. Mm -hmm. So we have about 60 women. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> And when we started out, we started with 14 women. Yeah. And through word of mouth, we've grown. Mm -hmm. um, so that shows the demand that there is out there. Yeah. Um, so our women are from Nairobi County mm -hmm. and the surroundings. So we've got a lot of uh, Kiambu, uh, Mweki, mm -hmm. uh, a bit of Kitengela. Mm -hmm. um, yes, that's as far as we've gotten. Yeah. Um, and so what we, do, we did in the beginning is just bring them together. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, they are a bit scattered mm -hmm. in all circles. Yeah. So we have monthly meetings mm -hmm. where they come together. Um, and then we have capacity building workshops. Mm -hmm. um, so we've had workshops, for example, on parenting because most of them are parents. Yeah. And as I mentioned, the long working hours mm -hmm. prevent them or put them at, um, at a very you know, interesting situation where they are not with their families and with their kids as yeah. much as they would want Especially to Especially for a mother from five yes. to ten. Yeah. That's crazy. Yes, yes. that's crazy. Um, and we've also worked with them on first aid training, like what, what happens when you're in an accident, mm -hmm. right, and it's your matatu, yeah. right? Can you do something well? the ambulance is coming, mm -hmm. right? And how do you even reach ambulances? Mm -hmm. So we had a training with uh, St. John's mm -hmm. on that. Uh, we've also had a training with um, on tire management. Mm -hmm. So Gary Garibika, what do you do? Yeah. Do you depend on the driver? Mm -hmm. But we are like, no, you're as, as capable, mm -hmm. right? And this is how you do it, right? Yeah. Uh, we've had an incident where a lady attended the tire maintenance tire and vehicle maintenance course mm -hmm. and she got uh, arrested and the police said mm -hmm. it's because your tire Aikua, it was um, a safety concern mm -hmm. because uh, Ampua make enough pressure okay right? and she was able to go and say uh, no 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 this is how you check for pressure oh, right? nice. this is what you do <laughs> <laughs> and and then she says the policeman was so shocked that he was like, okay, fine, mm -hmm. just go. Just go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so she called her, she's like, oh my God, how did it work? Yeah. You know? <laughs> and she talks freely about it. Um, so we've been doing some capacity building trainings mm -hmm. um, just to, because our mission, as I said, is to attract, retain, and advance. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing a lot of retaining because yeah. the turnover of women in the matatu industry is quite high. Yeah. And given the work environment, it completely makes sense. True. Right? So we've been working on the retaining. Mm -hmm. And right now, our next step is working on advancing them. Mm -hmm. So we've been working on trying to work with driving schools to mm -hmm. get more women um, to be drivers mm -hmm. and to find a way to put, um, to post them into driving positions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, just like I asked before, the Msupa Wanganya, yes. <laughs> yes, movie trailer. <laughs> Why did you, is it a flown, a flown um, initiative project yes. or did you have other people come together um, to do that project? So one of the concerns for the ladies is that, um, again, the stereotypes that people have about them, right? Yeah. So Utapata, um, that most of the violence against women working in the matatu industry mm -hmm. is actually from fellow commuters. Yeah. Yes. And so they were saying, okay, we need to, we need to find a way to 
put a human face to our work. Mm -hmm. They need to know us beyond our work. Yeah. Right? And so we've done a couple of uh, public awareness campaigns. Mm -hmm. So we've done a play mm -hmm. called Wa Mama Wa Matri yeah. at Alliance. Mm -hmm. And we now, with this Msupankanya project, mm -hmm. we work with uh, Mau Mau Art mm -hmm. Collective. Mm -hmm. So it was a group of artists that came together, mm -hmm. met our women. Yeah. Um, they had about three content creation workshops, mm -hmm. which I have to say I was really impressed because we had... Um, <coughs> We had budgeted for one, mm -hmm. but the artists were like, no, we want to be able to really represent mm -hmm. the women and the challenges they are going through and what they are trying to tell the public. Yeah. So they, they out of their own goodwill, mm -hmm. met the ladies. They would come for their monthly meetings and they're like, script does it make sense? Should we change it? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why Msupanganya has been so um, amazing and powerful is because yeah. they really took time to... Um, understand the women. Mm -hmm. It's so captivating. I actually Thank felt you. it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine someone like there going There's a lot that. of work that the artists put yeah. um, in, into working with the women and telling them what their vision is and making sure it's as uh, realistic as they want it to be. Yeah. Um, and so for, for Msupanganya short film, mm -hmm. it's about a driver mm -hmm. and a conductor, mm -hmm. woman driver and conductor, and talking about and taking us through a day in their lives. Yes. Right, like the driver, the husband left after she started doing matatu work. Mm -hmm. Right, the son is angry at her because she's like, if it wasn't for you, mm -hmm. my dad would be here. Mm -hmm. Right, and even because she's a Muslim, mm -hmm. so even the people in the mosque come and tell her, hey, this is not a job for yeah, women. For women, in, yeah, in this our is religion. a man's job. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so we see her struggling to like help the kids understand that this is a job, yeah. right? And it's like any other job, mm -hmm. right? Uh, please don't believe the public when what they say about us. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to make sure you go to school, you have yeah, food, food on, on the food table. on the table. Yeah. Um, and then there's uh, the conductor. Mm -hmm. Um, and she, her father is against her working in the matatu industry, mm -hmm. right? She's like, that's not a job. Mm -hmm. You can't call that a job. Yeah, it's even worse for a conductor. Yes. Yeah, for a lady conductor. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, and then her mom gets sick, mm -hmm. right? And they're unable to pay for rent and pay um, for the medicine. But through her work, she's able to support the entire family through that hardship. Yes. Yeah. Right, um, and then we have the commuter who mm -hmm. gets into the matatu and gets harassed, and then the conversation in the matatu about it, mm -hmm. right? Because they're like, ah, sulkume vaivin de ushikwe shikwe, right? And having that conversation play out in the matatu as it would in real life, yeah. and as the women working in the transport industry has have seen it play out, mm -hmm. right? And getting to a point where the women were the ones who saved the commuter. Mm -hmm. They had a conversation with the, with the men about what they're about to do mm -hmm. and got the police involved. Yes. Um, yeah, so it, I think it's been quite powerful because it's stories from the women about their work. Yeah. And it gives us a new light into their lives that we've not thought about yes. or seen before. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's actually what is happening. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, so I want us to wind up. Yes. But before we do so, mm -hmm. um, when Flown Initiative started mm -hmm. and around that time when my Dress My Choice mm -hmm. campaign started, yes. there were still those people who believed that it's not the woman's. It was, it was the woman's fault. Uh -huh. And I know that there were people who were against yes. that campaign. So right now, especially men, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have um, partners who are working with you that are mostly majority are men, or how is the support right now compared to that time? Um, yes. Yeah, so back in my dress, my choice, which I was involved in, mm -hmm. we had um, the counter campaign was called "Nudity is not my choice." Yeah. Right. And when we were doing the protest, they mm -hmm. actually showed up. Yes. Right, and we had a face-off at Supreme Court mm -hmm. um, where they were threatening now to strip us. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, again, going back 
to even my experience and other women's experience is that dressing is a scapegoat. Mm -hmm. It is not the real issue. Yeah, that's not the real issue. Mm -hmm. Right? Because even when you look at the various victims that, you know, uh, have been victims of violence and even stripping in public transport, mm -hmm. it's really not about dressing. Yeah. Right? Like the lady in Yeri had a sundress. Mm -hmm. The lady in Kisumu mm -hmm. had white trousers. Mm -hmm. The lady at uh, Embasava, the incident that happened at Embasava, mm -hmm. um, had jeans on and yeah. a red top. Mm -hmm. The Kayole incident, mm -hmm. the woman uh, hawker, mm -hmm. egg hawker, mm -hmm. Kwebo at at our matatu in that stage knew her because she was hawking eggs. Them. Yes. Yeah. Right? She had a, a jeans skirt. Right? So it's really not about dressing and we need to move away from this conversation of dressing and yeah. tackle the real issue. Mm -hmm. The real issue is that there is a gender war. Mm -hmm. Right? There is um there is a gender war and it's playing out as okay, to the extreme level in public transport. Mm -hmm. Right? There is this perception that this is a woman's place. Mm -hmm. And any deviations from that, we are like, no, 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 no. let's show you, yes, let's show yes. you where you belong. Go you back be to your place. Yes, go back to your car box. Yeah. Right? And again, going back to the perceptions we have about Matatu people, even the men themselves don't see themselves as being in jobs. Mm -hmm. Right? Nikama unafanya tu ka job while waiting for the real job. For the real thing, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So part of our work is saying, no, this is a job. Mm -hmm. The matatu is your office. Mm -hmm. Right? M according to our research, most people on a minimum are in the matatu industry for three years. Yeah. A minimum. Minimum. Some have worked there for years. Yes. Yeah. It is not a transition job. Mm -hmm. Seek a job, any job. Yeah. And if you take it seriously, mm -hmm. it could bring you like a lot of return. Like we've had one of our ladies, mm -hmm. she started off as a conductor, mm -hmm. moved as a stage manager. Mm -hmm. Now she owns her own matatu. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah. So those are the examples we say, like effort and you put in a vision and you go about working in the industry mm -hmm. is what will determine come out in that position for long. Yes. Right. If you answer to save, save, kidogo, 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 mm -hmm. okay. And, how are to wanna put interest rate here? Mm -hmm. How are to wanna put interest rate here? Mm -hmm. Right? This is how you can get your own matatu. Mm -hmm. And you know the industry. There's nobody else yeah. who's better to run a matatu than, than you, you who's been in the industry. Yes, exactly. Right? Um, and so I would like us, I think, in conclusion, to move away from conversation about dressing. It mm -hmm. is not about it's dressing. It's not about dressing. Sure. It is not about dressing. Mm -hmm. it, there's a gender war. Mm -hmm. We need to, as um, society, we need to unlearn mm -hmm. and relearn the modern woman. Yeah. Right. We are working on a nice. script that mm -hmm. uh, we are working off a script that only worked for our great grandmothers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The modern woman has had to re to reinvent herself yeah right mm -hmm. and it is our at the very least mm -hmm. our mandate as society to just learn the modern woman mm -hmm. yeah wow, that's powerful yeah things are yeah. changing we need to change they with are, them and we need to change with them yes. yes so thank you so much for making time to join me oh thank you yes. for having me <laughs> and um we wish you the best in your campaign thank and you. we hope to see more changes in the industry yeah, and creating a comfortable environment for women mm. to commute and to work in that industry. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you so thank much. You. Thank you for having yes. me. So like Naomi said, we need to learn the modern woman and create a comfortable environment for her to work and commute.